and yet there's a lot of depth there for the power users who want to go a little bit deeper. Can you uh, just touch real quick on the base management before you actually get into the measurement? Just just take a quick look at the uh, the base management, how that differs greatly from anything else that's out there right now. <laughs> Just and this is and this um, is basic too. This is real basic, as far as the altitude, but it's far more advanced if you were to look at it uh, in the eyes of like a receiver uh, base management setup. So again, if you if you want to just keep it simple because you know you don't do this for a living, all you have to do is you know choose on, and now it's on, and it will assume eighty hertz everywhere, mm -hmm. just like a basic AD. Yep, and more often than not, that's not a bad decision. Um, after you take some measurements, and you can actually see how deep your main channels go and, and how high your subwoofer can go and so forth, you, you may make a more informed decision as to, let's say for the sake of argument, your, main, your screen channels can go down to 40 hertz, and then your surround channels are kind of medium size, so they are good at 80, but maybe not much below that. And let's say your upper channels are, you know, only good to 120 hertz because that's all it fits. You know, that's what fits in the ceiling. Um, just by turning it on, it was 80 hertz everywhere. And as long as you don't get carried away with yourself, it'll be fine. Um, if you were a power user and decided that you wanted, well, let me do it one, for one step at a time. Yeah. So let's just say that we want to protect the top speakers because they're kind of wimpy. They can't do the deep bass. And we plan, plan to pay, you know, play pretty loud. So what we could do is just say, well, based on the specifications that came from, with those speakers, you know, the, the specification sheet, I'm going to set this up for 120 hertz instead of 80. And then, so check, I'm gonna drag this down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And so now I'm gonna say, I want you to apply that only to my upper channels and that one there and now where does that extra base go well in this case we only have the one sub channel it apply then you're done all of the other speakers are still at 80 hertz yeah but we just changed the ones that we checked off to 120 to be on the safe side because they're little speakers up in the ceiling mm -hmm. and without getting into it in too much more detail uh, yeah, I mean, you can confirm this by coming on to individual setup, and you can see that the left channel is still at 80. And if I pull this little list down, oops, pull this little list down, go to one of the top channels, and oh, did I not hit save? I didn't hit save. What a dope. Um, yeah. Okay. So I forgot to hit the apply button. Let's do it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you can change it to 120 for those. If you wanted to, we have this thing called intermediate base management, which to my knowledge, nobody else does. Let's take that same situation where you have the left top front speaker that's kind of small, doesn't do base. If you were to redirect uh, all of the base from up there to the subwoofer that maybe is in the left right corner of the floor, uh, at 120 Hertz, some people will detect that, be able to localize that sound. And so that plane that was supposed to be flying overhead, part of the plane sounds like it's coming from the floor. And it, well, that's just wrong. Um, now you could put it back in the ceiling, but you probably overdrive the speaker. There's gotta be some other solution. In our case, you can redirect everything below 120, not only to another subwoofer, but also to another speaker. So in this case, maybe you take the left top front information below 120, redirect it to the left main screen channel, mm -hmm. which can do that very easily. And then if the left main screen channel is good down to about 40, maybe you redirect everything below 40 from that speaker into the sub, which would include anything that was below 40 that was originally intended for the ceiling. So you can move the sound only as far as it has to move in order to be reproduced, uh, rather than just automatically sending it to the sub where you might not want it to be. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. That's an impressive thing. I've been doing... I've been messing around with having my base for my my front channels, my front sound stage. Just go to the front speakers, and maybe, and then directing the others to the other speakers, to the other subs rather. Um, and that's something that's the kind of flexibility that you get with this software that I haven't come across with the more mainstream brands out there. 
you know, there's a speaker company um, whose founder I know quite well. And uh, although this is somewhat controversial, he is a big believer in what he calls directional based management and what I call sort of regional based management. Um, people who very low frequencies are not particularly directional. You know, even at 80 hertz, the sound wave is about 14 feet long, and we only have about six inches between our ears, so we can't really triangulate on it. Um, however, Paul, my friend, um, is of the opinion, and he's demonstrated for this for me, and it, it, it can be persuasive. Um, it has some limitations too, but it's it's quite persuasive. He wants to redirect, let's say, of four subs, one in each corner of the room. He wants to redirect the bass uh, only to the nearest sub. So the left top front, the left speaker, and maybe the left wide would all go to the front left corner sub, and likewise all the way around the room. Um, now, if you do this, you need to have bigger subs because depending on what's happening in the soundtrack, the deep bass might only be reproduced by one sub instead of all four helping each other, right? So that's one of the limitations. He doesn't have a problem with big subs. He likes selling those. Um, but his perspective is that, you know, if there's an explosion, like the opening scene from Unbroken uh, is what he demonstrated for me. There, there's flack going on all around you. They're dropping bombs. And some of the concussion, like at one point there's this uh, flak burst that happens really off to the left of the plane. And, and you can feel it. I'm not sure that you're hearing the bass coming from that direction, but there is this sense of the concussion coming from kind of over there. And he feels that that adds a lot of realism to, you know, if it was an actual explosion coming from over there, there would be this concussive wave that would pass through you. Um, and it's pretty persuasive. Um, it's not for everybody, but it's one way of doing things. And we can do that very easily. Uh, if you have more than one sub, you just say, send this here, send that there. No problem. Speaking of uh, subwoofer base management, so the the altitude measures each subwoofer individually, or does it sum it all together and measure it as one? Either or both. Either or both. <laughs> <laughs> so there are, I warned you that this, this could be, this one section yeah. could be really Let's long. get into it. Um, and, and, and for your audience, we have a whole bunch of webinars, and uh, we're doing an introduction to base management in a couple of weeks, I think. I don't remember exactly when. Uh, we will follow that up with a much more advanced uh, base management, base alignment kind of thing. Um, it's more of a master's class at a, a future date. Um, but this is, a, this is a pretty big area of discussion. Um, in broad strokes, there are several schools of thought, but let's take as uh, two extreme examples. The one that I just described where you want bass only to be reproduced coming from kind of the part of the room where it's coming from. Um, and then there's another approach to a landing bass that is saying we want to minimize the seat to seat variation throughout the listening area. That's more important to us so that everybody has, you know, as much the same experience as possible. And the way you do that to oversimplify a bit is to set things up so that you know we all have had the experience of you know you have a single subwoofer in the room and if you put on a single sine wave and walk around the room there are parts of the room where it's really loud and parts of the room where you don't hear anything at all it's it's a dramatic you, know, you don't hear that with program material so much because it's not just one sine wave at a time but it's still happening and it gives people a different experience so the idea of the second approach is to say well at any, in any given chair one subwoofer might be strong, you know, might have a peak. Another subwoofer might have a valley. Can we set this up so that the hills and valleys of one sub offset the valleys and hills of another sub? And Floyd Tool and Sean Olive did a lot of research on this. And kind of the sweet spot is four subs. Two is definitely better than one. Big mm -hmm. difference. Um, and, and four gives you about 98% of what's available. You can go more than that. There's nothing wrong with going more than that. But uh, you get into diminishing returns. Um, but even doing the four requires that you set it up correctly. And this is where uh, I'm going to try and oversimplify a little bit. Um, two different ways of doing it would be to set up four different subs, have the optimizer individually calibrate each sub, and set level and de uh, level and delay and you know, all the equalization and 
and then just assume that when, once every sub is optimized that they'll all work beautifully together. And then there's another school of thought that says, yeah, that's a really big assumption. Um, so let's instead set up the four subs and set level and delay however your school of thought thinks it should be set. Uh, and then even though there are four subs, we're going to optimize them as though they were a single sub. And so more sophisticated base alignment technique. The way we do it is, oh, you're going to show us. Yeah, let's let's just, take a quick look at it real quick. Uh, you're ahead of me. Uh, if you go to active crossovers, well, actually, I'm going to have to change one thing because I used up all 16 outputs. Uh, so let me. Guys, this isn't perfect measurements for my subwoofers, all right? Just just, <laughs> just, just in case you're looking. It's not bad. Um, so it's a fairly flexible system, as you can tell. Uh, we can change, you know, right now we're just looking at the before and after curves. You can also see uh, filter. Let's see. Back. Yep. Okay. So I I know we were talking about my sixty hertz dip. There is one subwoofer. Mm -hmm. There's one subwoofer I changed locations, and I was able to give yeah. it that sixty hertz, the red one subwoofer yeah, four. It's much better than yeah. it was. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Um, and that's you know one of the things that you can see very easily. You, this interface is a little bit complicated, so I apologize to your your viewers. This is the sort of thing that most people don't have to get into. 